takes the snap, sets up, sets up, throws one over the knee, intercepted! Marlon Jackson! Marlon's got it! We're going to the Super Bowl! We're going to the Super Bowl! I know you're going to dig this. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. Ryan Grigson is no longer with the franchise. I'm about to go down! You're listening to the For the Culture Podcast, hosted by Luke Diamond, Jason Spears, and Bobby Jefferson. Got the top speed, and it was dead even, and that, that was it. And, uh, and let me, let, stat. Let, it let me read that anything. sentence. Let me read the next-gen sentence that you're referring to. Oh, God. This is a quote. Quote, Green's oh, wheels were on display in Week 17 as he was nearly able to chase down Jaguars running back Corey Grant on his 57-yard touchdown run, end quote. Keyword nearly, keyword nearly. Let him him break it down. (laughs) Nearly. That's the word I'm going to use, and and I told you I'd use it. Nearly. Nearly can mean a lot of things. That's so vague. I was at the game, and, and I was watching that play. He nearly did nothing to affect that play. Um, he got outran. So he ran at 22 miles an hour. That's great if you're taking a straight line angle, but the angle that he took was so horrible that he got outran by a guy that we don't even know. <laughs> and yeah, like who the hell is the Corey Grant? That, I have no idea who he is. I would have to research him, but they put him on this first team participation trophy team, and his glaring stat that they put out there was the fact that he nearly made a play. So let me get this straight. We are now giving out awards for people who nearly do things well. Well, here's some more stats about T.J. Green that they could say that not only did he not, only did he not nearly do, he actually did. Um, defensive holding, Jacksonville. Unnecessary roughness, Jacksonville. Running into the kicker, Chicago. Defensive pass interference, Tennessee. Necessary roughness, again, Kansas City. Running into the kicker, Pittsburgh. Running into the kicker, Houston. So if those things can get you on an award show or get you an award for Next Generation, sign me up. Because clearly that's what he does. That's what he does. That's T.J. Green, ladies and gentlemen, the guy who can cuss his own players because he's out of control. But he's first team, and God forbid he read it. If he read this, his head was already as big as a balloon, but his head may pop (laughs) if he reads this. It's not like they listed, like, 25 plays and one of them happened to be the nearly play. They listed one play. It's like that play where he nearly caught Corey Grant. That one play was so incredibly spectacular where he didn't catch him because he took a bad angle, was good enough to land him on this all-rookie team. He didn't make the tackle. Like, he didn't get a hand. He didn't even get near. I don't he, think he came he close He nearly to him. got a hand on him if he was five yards closer. If he had been five yards closer, he nearly would have got a hand on him. Not to mention that play resulted in a touchdown by the yeah. Jacksonville a 50, Jaguars. A 57-yard touchdown at home. I know what the, the crazy thing is, that, that wasn't even his worst play of that game. Win. Exactly. You actually have to come from behind to actually win that game. Yep. Are you kidding me? Wow. I mean, for me, like, I think pretty much anybody that knows me and knows, like, how much I hated this pick. I don't think this guy is going to be a part of what uh, of a good defense or whatever good defense we build. He's just not. He's not good at anything. He's not humble. There, you've got you've got to be able to have a certain level of humility to yourself as a football player to know there are always things that you can learn. There are always things. It's like Peyton Manning. There are always things you can learn. There are always things you can do. Film work, all kinds of stuff, study that you can do to get better. This guy's got the, the head the size of Indianapolis, and he hasn't done anything at all. And he's not a good player. He's terrible in coverage. He takes false steps. He doesn't read well. He doesn't react well. He plays slower than his speed. I mean, I can go on for days. I hated his pick when they made it. I do not think in three years this guy's going to be on our defense. I, I think it's going to end up being a bomb this pick, it was taken all because he ran a 4-3 in the Panty Olympics, which means absolutely nothing. If you watch his college film, he was not very good. He was terrible in coverage. And when in big games, he got, he got eaten alive. So, I mean, you guys know how I feel about this guy. This stat is, is just stupid. They should just give him a trophy, send it to his house so he can put it on his wall, you know, his wall of fame, along with the fastest, you know, fastest safety ever in the draft, which I don't even think is true, by the way. But, hey, Bo- Bobby, when you when you watch film of the safeties going up until last year's draft, did you did you watch any of T.J. Green? I never did. 
And I actually, I actually went back and watched his his complete game against uh, Alabama, um, and also a lot. There's a lot of other ACC games I watch, but his his game against Alabama was some of the worst football I've seen. When they drafted him in the second round, I my head, if it could have exploded, it would definitely have exploded. Then I, I just. The reach project, like the project in the second round, when you have no defense, is just. I mean the yeah. way the way Gritchen threw around first and second round picks, like he was playing Madden, or like he was playing like a board game, like he treated them like they meant nothing. Like it's embarrassing when you look at the first and second round draft history of Ryan Gritchen and Jason. When you were watching the tape and you went back and watched the Alabama Clemson game, did you know about this undiscipline and the and the stupidity of these penalties that he was going to bring? To the well, I didn't. I didn't know the the level of of undisciplinedness as far as actual penalties, but I didn't. I did notice the un- level of undisciplinedness when it came to reading and reacting. Yeah. He takes. A, he took a lot of false steps. He blew. He blew two huge coverages that gave O.J. Howard touchdowns in the in the national championship game. Um, there were other games. He like. He was so bad in the pass coverage, and I know Bobby's. Knows this. He was the worst-rated coverage safety in the draft, and we're going to make him a free safety. I mean, exactly. I hate it. I mean, the pick was just horrid. Remember last like, year when Pagano started talking about moving him the corner? Oh my God! Yeah. I just. Oh. And and one thing I did, one thing I did do after the pick, because I believe I was on Twitter when the pick was made, and and I saw Jason's rant, and he hated the pick. I was unfamiliar with the pick. So what I immediately did after the pick was I went back and threw on some tape. And you're right, Jason. The first tape I came about was the national championship game. Being a Bama fan, the mere fact that I never noticed him and I watched that game and and never noticed him was glaring. And then when I actually went back to watch the tape to specifically look at him, you're right. They lost the national championship. He blew coverage. It was so bad. And I went back, and when I watched it as a fan, I saw, wow, O.J. Howard was so open. He just outran everybody. T.J. Green was actually on that near hash, and somehow when the ball was snapped, he ended up on the opposite side, on the opposite field hash. Yep. And the angle that he took to try to run this guy down was he was running parallel. It was absolutely horrid. And then I start reading the reviews and the scouts, and they were saying he was the worst-rated safety in, in, in the ACC he graded yep. this, Jeez. this, and this in the bottom third. And I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, we watch film. Grigson watched film. And I go to Colts.com after the draft, and they're talking about all the draft picks. And the first thing they say about T.J. Green was, well, when we noticed him, we noticed that he was so athletic he was 6'2", and he ran 4'3". No, th- that's not what you say when, you, when you've already invested a second-round pick in somebody. You say, we watched film on him, and he made so many X, Y, Z plays. The first thing they said is how good he looked in shorts, how tall he was, and how fast he was, which translates into, hey, if you want to run a 200-meter dash in the Olympics, feel free. But that doesn't make you a great free safety in, in the National Football League. Well, unless you're trying to compete for next-gen awards, because if you're competing for unless next-gen awards, for next gen, all that matters <laughs> is your speed. You, it depends on what top speed you hit when you're chasing down running backs, taking bad angles, letting them score 57-yard touchdowns in your own building.